good morning today's topic is the extraction of alkali metals this is the periodic table of elements and all of us are aware that here the elements are arranged in the increasing order of their atomic number and for the sake of convenience we are uh, we are studying the elements the group the compounds and their properties and all by classifying them as four main blocks which are s p d and f this classification is made on the basis of the fact that where does the valence electron or the differentiating electron or the last electron enter in which subshell the last electron enters the s block elements are the elements in which the last electron or the differentiating electron enters into s subshell there are two categories two main groups which come under the s block elements which are group 1 and 2 or otherwise these are alkali and alkaline earth metals this is the electronic configuration and the elements are or the metals are lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium there is a single electron in the valence shell of all these elements or metals this is how they look we can see that it is slippery solid up to potassium and the appearance is little bit different in the case of rubidium and cesium and francium is radioactive and there is no much study is done in the case of francium because it has a very much less existence a, it has only a transient existence so we couldn't study about all those things in a detailed manner till now and regarding sodium we know that it's a it's a solid and we, it's a very much soft solid and we can cut it even by with a knife and regarding the properties on it we know that these are highly reactive and the and they react very much vigorously with water and they evolve hydrogen in that reaction they are reactive acids to uh, to liberate hydrogen again and with air their their color or the, uh, their metallic luster that will tarnish by the formation of an oxide layer and eventually on the absorption of this atmospheric carbon dioxide that will be converted into carbonate so the color or the lustrous effect will be gone when we keep it in the air for some time but normally we don't do that we know that it, it is stored in in oil or kerosene like that so to avoid the contact between atmosphere atmospheric oxygen okay so our main topic of today is not the reaction and all we are concentrating in the extraction part now let's see how these alkali metals are extracted from their minerals okay the first one is lithium and lithium is extracted from its silicate mineral that is lepidolite this is the most important ore of lepidolite we know that you know the difference between minerals and ores okay um, the mineral from which the ore is, so the metal is extracted is called actually the ore okay so um, lepidolite has varying compositions of lithium sodium potassium and this aluminum silicate is there and the anions are fluoride or hydroxide ions so the first step is to convert the lithium present in lepidolite into lithium chloride in lepidolite the anions are fluoride or hydroxide so these are these are first converted into lithium in the form of lithium fluoride or lithium hydroxide is converted into lithium chloride in the beginning that is the first step then it is mixed with potassium chloride okay it is mixed with potassium chloride uh, chloride and they are fused and electrolyzed at 400 degree celsius and why this potassium chloride is added this kcl is added to decrease the melting point of lithium chloride we know that the salts of the chlorides of alkali metals have very high melting point so to reduce that or to decrease the melting point you are adding some other agents okay some other salts and this chlorine gas is liberated at graphite anode so chlorine is the anion here cl minus and li plus will be there because it's fused and this uh, at graphite anode chlorine gas is liberated and molten lithium floats on the surface of the electrolyte it is then collected and purified i'll just sketch this is schematic representation this is the electrolysis chamber and here 
here positive charge that is graphite can sorry graphite anode graphite anode is there we are inserting actually two graphite anodes the positive charge and then comes our anode which is made up of steel charge will be negative and this is made up of steel cathode okay graphite anode and steel cathode here you are filling this one with fused lithium chloride this is the fused lithium chloride along with some amount of potassium chloride and then there is a chamber like this or an inverted beaker like uh, there is a portion like this which is inverted and after electrolysis the molten lithium metal floats on the surface of our mixture that is fused mixture is there so lithium floats on the surface this is the just the schematic representation of the electrolysis chamber hope you understood and when, when it comes to sodium the important minerals are rock salt that is the common one and all, all of us are familiar with that and all of us have seen that also okay and then comes chili saltpeter that is sodium nitrate and then comes cryolite that is NH3AlF6 and this cryolite is the mineral of aluminium also because there is a considerable amount of aluminium present in the case of cryolite and the, regarding this chili saltpeter normally this saltpeter that is actually potassium nitrate that was that is obtained or that that we can dig out from this rock sand or from uh, this plain sand okay so the from chile also they found that uh, there is a huge deposit of saltpeter over there chile is the south american country you know that okay but after examining that one they understood that there is some difference between the saltpeter obtained from the rest of the world and the saltpeter obtained especially from chile so when studied about this the people or the scientists came to know that or that or they have come to the conclusion that it is not potassium nitrate it is the sodium nitrate that's why it is given as in the beginning it was called as chili saltpeter because the saltpeter obtained from chili but it turned out to be another compound instead of potassium nitrate it was sodium nitrate okay so these three are the main minerals or the main ores of so sodium and then it is for extraction process our sodium chloride is used because that's the most abundant one the sodium chloride is, it is used and this is mixed with calcium fluoride and sodium fluoride we are adding these two to reduce the melting point of sodium chloride from 800 to 600 degrees celsius okay 200 there's a difference of 200 degrees celsius so it is reduced from 800 to 600 degrees celsius and then as we have seen in the case of lithium also chlorine gas is a valuable byproduct and that is liberated at graphite and and sodium na plus is reduced to na at, so at the steel cathode and it it floats on the surface as sodium metal molten sodium metal floats on the surface i have shown you in the case of lithium okay and and then it is collected and purified this is potassium and the main minerals are saltpeter i mentioned it already and then carnelite that is kcl mgcl2 6h2 okay but potassium is normally not extracted from both of these minerals or ores this is obtained by heating potassium fluoride with calcium carbide at um, an elevated temperature that is 1000 degree celsius okay saltpeter and carnelite are the main minerals of potassium but it is normally extracted by from potassium fluoride it is heated with calcium carbide at about 1000 degree celsius to get pure potassium metal and when it comes to rubidium it's a rare element it occurs in nature along with other alkali metals because there is not a minerals uh, is not found with rubidium in which the it has an abundant proportion or concentration normally it is seen in carnelite and lepidolite in very small amount okay carnelite and lepidolite carnelite 
is an ore of is a mineral of potassium normally and lepidolite is a mineral of lithium but they contain up to one percentage of rubidium chloride see the percentage is very less only up to one percentage of rubidium chloride is seen in these two minerals and these are the most important source of the metal that's why we are telling it as this is a rare metal and it's very difficult to extract rubidium and the picture i have given is that of rubidium chloride and then this rubidium extracted by electrolysis of fused rubidium chloride or rubidium hydroxide the extraction process is almost the same in the case of all alkali metals okay so it is electrolyzed rubidium chloride is electrolyzed or rubidium hydroxide can also be taken this is cesium this is also a rare element and the chief ore is pellucite okay beryl is also there but beryl is normally the ore of beryllium okay the concentration of beryllium is higher in the in beryl but normally cesium ore is pellucite i have given the picture of pellucite and we can we can see that it's it looks like diamond right uh, see it's it's also all these are even lepidolite and these are used as gemstones also okay so it looks like diamond it has the same uh, the shining and luster of diamond okay this is pellucite cesium 4 al4 si9 o26.6h2 okay this is obtained in pure form by heating it with calcium metal at very high temperature that is 900 degree celsius cesium is easily vaporized so when we heat it with calcium at 900 degrees celsius the cesium vapors are coming out and these vapors are cooled and sublimated to be puri uh, to purify them we know that sublimation is a process in which the solid is not is directly entering into a vapor state by skipping the solution or liquid state right so it is cooled it is mainly it's used as a very good tool for purification so cesium is sublimated to get the pure compound sorry to get the pure cesium metal in vacuum at 350 to 400 400 degrees celsius to get the pure metal and again there is another method that is it's obtained by heating cesium chloride with calcium okay most of the metals alkali metals we are discussing uh, can be can be extracted or the one way one common way to memorize is that from cesium chloride okay we are fusing there not cesium chloride the chlorides of all these things and we are taking the chloride we are fusing it with something else and then we are getting the desired metal right and this is the last one that is francium okay this is radioactive and it has a half life period of only 21 minutes so whatever the study we can we have to conduct we'll have to do it within the 21 minutes because after that the francium will be converted into another element that's why we cannot we couldn't study the properties of francium to a greater extent with which we study the reactions of sodium potassium etc okay it is obtained by alpha ray decay of actinium i'll write the equation here actinium is 89 and 237 alpha ray decay means what will emerge out alpha particle one alpha particle is a helium nucleus you know that and by reducing then from 89 the atomic number will come down to 87 and this atomic number sorry this atomic number will reduce to 87 and atomic mass will reduce to 233 right so this will be francium okay this is this is how actinium sorry francium is formed by the alpha ray decay of actinium it has a very small existence that is its half life is only 21 minutes this is all about the extraction part and uh, yeah extraction part of alkali metals in the coming classes we'll discuss about the compounds and their reactivities in detail okay thank you